Okay then. I got myself into a bit of a pickle here. Because I busted everything down. I've mentioned before in this series, if anybody's watching it and keeping up on it, is how there's always something. There's always something going on. Things just don't go the way they want to be. So, um, wow. Looks like I'm going to have to refill my cabocil or aerosil again. Luckily, I got a big enough bag that, uh, I've refilled that thing three times. I go through a lot of glass. Maybe that's because I fix a lot of stuff over and over and over and over. But anyway, I'm thanking my lucky star, my buddy Rodney, for saving my butt yet again. Because, how do I say this? Uh, functional, functionable. He taught me a long time ago, don't build, don't waste it, don't take the time to finish a thing up till you have checked to see that it is functionable. And that is what I'm doing. So, here it is Friday. I'm coming up on a weekend. This week has been retarded because I've been dealing with a very inept set of engineers and architects on a job. And, uh... All of a sudden I realized I'm in a bind here. The week went by, it's Friday, I want to shoot all day tomorrow. And I'm in trouble. Um, and I decided to get out of trouble, I've got to do some work here. And that's what I'm doing. And uh, frankly, mixing and pouring epoxy is boring. So I wanted to have somebody to talk to. I decided to talk to you guys. Very one-sided conversation. I have what could be called a captive audience, because... Well, no, I don't. All you gotta do is shut this off. You don't have a... You're, you're, I'm a click away from having no audience whatsoever, so... I'm just down here by myself, babbling away semi-incoherently and bringing you up to speed on what's going on here. As you can see, I've chosen a totally new color today, because I don't know why. Maybe I uh, ran over a possum earlier and the roadkill came out about this color. I don't know. Um, but to get back to my functionable train of thought, this is kind of the way life goes in my world of this prototyping and building different new stuff all the time. There's always something going wrong. I'm just glad that I decided to do four guns. Because right now I got no guns. The only gun I've got to shoot right now is the screen door. And I had kind of decided I don't have a useful thing to test with it. I've already tested the fact that basically it's light enough and it's got a small enough break that the screen door is probably going to stay just the way it is. Mainly this is because I pussed it up. I'll, re I'll bring it back. This is the one with the pinned on muzzle brake. I can't just make another brake, which by the way isn't easy, um, and screw it on here and tighten it down. Uh, at the time, I know, see, see, this is so funny because I know in my belly how things work. No, let me put it another way. I know in my brain how things work. I know how much torque and force a muzzle brake takes, but I also know in my brain that there's a whole mini um, industry out there of people who are, in fact, selling clamp-on muzzle brakes. I know it works. I have a hunch it only works on puny guns. Um, I've never actually owned and I'll just name Wit Machine is a big one, and I hear tons of good stuff. They have a nice looking brake. I would, without even hesitating, send someone that way and say, go buy one of these. I don't have anything wrong or bad against it. Um, but just because, as I said, I always have a dozen tests running, I'm doing this 50 BMG thing, which is treading new ground for me. It's all new territory. 
I've shot a bunch of them, but they're all somebody else's and they all suck. I've never been impressed. I've never had any reason ever to build a 50 BMG. Every 50 BMG I've ever seen is like, dude, I would go out and buy the cheapest Saturday Night Special 380 and go uh, hit steel plates with it before I'd own one of these things. Ten bucks a pop to pull the trigger and for what? It's like having a uh, overpriced SKS. SKSs don't turn my crank nor do all of the cobbled together 50 BMGs out there that are lucky on a good day to make one MOA and non-repeatable. Um, one MOA is not even where I start. It's, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. I'm starting to one MOA on these. They're not exactly blowing the doors off right out the hatch. But, to get back to my buddy Rodney saving my butt and his Function, 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 Al, you're forgetting your purpose in life. Function is everything. I come up against this weekend, and I've been planning. I'm going to fix this gun. I've come up with a plan. I am so excited because I've come up with a plan. I'm flipping over the rails, bringing them up, lining them with Delrin. Got this whole front. And as I'm running through the numbers in my mind... I mentioned before about this thing shaking his tail, and I still feel strongly that that's a major part of the problem. It doesn't have to make sense to anybody, and I'm never going to try to explain it to anyone, but I do not believe it. And here's the problem. The recoil, like this whole gut, this is the raw billet of this assembly. It keeps changing because I keep knocking stuff off and it gets wimpier and wimpier and wimpier. But the billet was set up for a different action than this called the Noreen action. And it's big and it's long and it's just simply nothing like this svelte teeny little action that I'm putting in it. But the real quote, oh this stuff's starting to get hot. I don't know if I can gesture much more. I need to start dropping this pig in. You had a colorant. I was in such a hurry. I don't even have any release agent on this. I'm just going to have to wipe it all off. I hope it drops in there good. Um, but as I said, I got into a bind. I'm going to start. Oh, stank. Stuff hanging out on here. As we're talking, I'll drop this in. Um, And we're going to do a bunch of things different here. As you know, I'm a big proponent of the old gravity feed thing. Put it in and let it set under gravity, under its own weight. Never, never, never. Well, first of all, this action here is pretty hard to bend. Second of all, gravity just isn't going to work in this case. I'm going to actually have to put it in. It's got so many screws. I'm going to have to put it in and tighten some screws up in it, unfortunately. That's just the way it's going to have to be. This little dude is going to have itself some screws going. And I got in such a hurry because I'm so thrown out and discombobulated that uh, I didn't even hardly release agent this thing. I just am throwing it in. Come on, baby. Did I do wrong here? Do I have to come back up? <clears throat> I do, because I'm a dork. I absolutely do, because I'm absolutely a dork, and I put some. I've had to redo this thing so freaking many times that I forget where the holes are. This gun has been done and redone way more times than should be natural. And it's because I it sucks. It's never shot. I've never been able to get the stupid thing to shoot. I've never shot a single good group with it. Not one. And that's frustrating to me. That is abnormal to me. That is not the sort of thing that... 
makes me happy. This isn't either, but this is just poor planning right in front of it. God and everybody here. I'm okay with that because Granddaddy done told me if you ain't screwing up, you ain't trying hard enough. Well, I do my share of screwing up. So, unfortunately having to burden you with my screwing up has got to get somewhat old. But anyway, I am going to not put this thing together out of pure gravity. I'm actually going to have a chemical assist on this guy. A mechanical assist. I'm going to do some... Uh... I'm up against the wire here. I'm up against the gun. I am unprepared. As I said, I didn't even release agent this thing. I just looked at it and went, ah, that action's greasy enough. I put a little bit of putty on the recoil lug so that it'll come back out clean. And everything else is just hootie do. Let her rip. Um, because I want to shoot this tomorrow. I got. And there's so much prep work that I could do and maybe should do that I'm just not going to do. Because, as I said, I want to get this thing pigged in here. And I got to have something to shoot tomorrow. Because. I pretty much set aside the screen door as being unready for the testing that needs to be done on it. Boy, now there's a messy thing. This thing has been re-drilled so many times you can see some of the holes that are in it. Um, I've had to redo this stock because this stock started out for an entirely different gun. This stock started out or for an entirely different action. This billet was back when I couldn't get these actions. And I was convinced that I had to build it on a Noreen action, which is a big long dog. And the recoil lug is clear up here. This whole fish belly through here is designed for a reason. It just didn't occur on its own. No, I made it that way. And I made it that way because I wanted to. And the reason I wanted to is because this is how I think the forces generate. One of the analogies I used earlier on in the set was picture a leaf spring and how it has to work. The leaf spring oh this could go sideways real quick. The leaf spring on a car has got tension in the middle. I'm treating this somewhat like a leaf spring in the sense that where the torque is generated, where the torsion is generated, where the moment is generated has to be the stoutest. It has to support. Sorry, I've got too many hands going here. I'm going to do my best while I still have motion here. Yep, 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 yep. This is going to work. So, what I'm trying to say in my desultory fashion here as I fiddle around and try to get something bedded right in front of y'all. Um, just letting that ooze catch up to everything here. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to... Yeah, I'll wipe it off. I'll wipe it off at my leisure, not on video. So, this billet was built around an action this long. Actually, a little bit longer because I cut this out. The recoil lug is clear up here. So in figuring the forces and the way this is going to bend and go, I minimize this, figuring I can always add weight back on here. I minimize this. Well, life changed. Dude got back to me and I got some more of these actions. In getting some more of these actions, it freed me up to change my whole program. Which, of course, being me, I did change the whole program. Um, and I decided that that Noreen was ill-served doing what it was doing. So I took it another direction. One, four, three, nine, oh. One, five. Uh, how far do I dare? One four four one five. Still one five. I have to jam something down in there. This, my peeps, 
It's called blowing and going on the fly. This is being truly unprepared. I'm just slobbering this thing together because just a minute I'll be able to bring you back up to speed as to what happened. Some of you will know if you've watched other episodes exactly what happened. Um, basically I've got some guns that are not ready i.e. the Noreen gun needs to be bedded in. Um, I, I did what I, I, I bedded the aluminum block in and went out and shot it metal to metal. Wasn't happy. Uh, nothing worth reporting back. Not an utter failure, but certainly not a success. Already really unprepared. It's coming. It is coming. So, Noreen gun, not ready, test failed. Screen door, I've decided to just change directions on completely. Not, not something I want to shoot right now. And uh, I was headed for this weekend, feeling good about life, the universe, and everything. And this happened. I want you, some of you, I, I bring this up again just to say, those of you who don't believe that a muzzle break is doing a lot of work need to think about what just happened there. That steel that came apart still measured over 200 thousandths in thickness. I had cut it down to 208, I think, thousandths, calling that a minimum, that being the thickness of these plates right here. Well, no it's not, 150 thou. So I lied to you, it's even skinnier than I thought, but I thought it looked okay. Okay, we're centered up in here now, and I'm sorry about that, I did not expect that. There's a pressure point in here somewhere, probably a piece of epoxy, because this is the third time I've bedded this thing. I went out last night when I realized I had a problem, and I realized I had a big day at work today, and I realized I was running out of time, and I threw this thing in the mill, and I slid this entire action forward over an inch. As I said, this originally was a different action. This originally was, and it's all mailed out in here for a big round action. I brought this and I set it back and I did some stuff with this and I tried to make it work and it doesn't shoot. And I'm going through and trying to figure out why and I have convinced myself it's because the balance point, the flex point, the uh, torsion points, call it what you want, are in the wrong place. I set the stock up to act and react a certain way at a certain place at a certain time. And in, uh, it, it can't do that because everything was set up here and I moved it all back to here and I feel like it's torquing and bending and twisting absurdly. So, basically I have one gun set aside, another one not ready, and I busted my best billet gun, which I was planning to work up tomorrow. Tonight and tomorrow I was planning to take my two-piece billet gun and really put it, because it's showing bra, it's shooting what looks like bug holes. They're far from bug holes because with these half inch holes, a clover leaf can still measure a half an inch and look pretty impressive, but it's not. Um, but anyway, it's shooting just fine, predictably, and I'm happy. And this. I had decided I was going to completely change out. I revamped and rebuilt the entire front. I flipped the supports over. I built Delrin rails for it. And uh, 
I decided to come in here and just move this action as far forward as I could and still reach the trigger. It's going to be a stretch. I'm going to have to bump this forward enough, but I'm, I'm finding the thinnest spot here. The point is this gun is being rebuilt essentially from the ground up. And thank you again, Rodney, for your functionability stuff. Your idea that don't get... I, I could have finished this gun out. I'm getting it all glassed up and I was getting ready, thought about painting it and whatever. And I just, I keep working it into the rotation to shoot and it won't shoot. And I, it, I can't fix and it doesn't fix and... Um, so it's time now to take it to another step and, uh, that's what I'm doing. So this bedding that you saw and this misfitment that you've seen, I don't know, this might end up just hanging out here because I might be able to dress it up and make it look okay. But basically I've screwed this billet up. I've pretty much foobarred it. And, uh, I'm doing my best to get rid of the R and repair it, but it ain't pretty. So. There's our, uh, made you suffer through another bed video, which is always fun. Um, hopefully this thing will come back out when I'm done. I'm putting it in under tension, but I relieved tension up here. Uh, and I did check it while you were, while we were talking, I tightened these and I rocked this to find out where neutral would be here. And I have a dimension and two dimensions. So I feel that it's in there neutrally. And if it's not, tough squiddly. Because even a poorly bedded gun will shoot at any one given time. It's just that if you pull it out and rebed it, then you got to get into torquing the screws and bending the action back to where it was. All kinds of total garbage. In my opinion, a perfectly bedded gun is such you can take it apart and then screw the handle back on. Nothing, nothing, the tune doesn't even change, let alone the point of impact. So, this may not be the best bedding job you've ever seen, but it's there. And uh, hopefully it gets hard tonight and I could shoot tomorrow, because otherwise, Tomorrow, I'm, I might have to go shoot a PPC or something. Um, that's going to be different.